Welcome to the Fitness Beginner Podcast, where we help you take the first steps on your fitness journey. Whether you're new to working out or you're looking to get back into it, we've got you covered with tips, tricks, and inspiration to help you reach your goals. So grab your workout gear and let's get started. All right, and we are live. Welcome back with Murphy Mac to another episode of the Fitness Beginner Podcast. Hope you all had a great Monday. It's going to be a good week this week. Today's podcast topic is going to be about my Ironman experience that I had this past weekend. If you've been following the podcast at all, you know that I've been training for an Ironman for several months now, and it was finally this weekend. I finally got the job done, and that's what we're going to talk about today, how you can kind of use my journey as kind of a roadmap for your journey on getting started on whatever that goal is that you have, whether that be starting a fitness journey, getting in the gym, starting to lift weights, or even if you have like a race that you have in mind too, maybe it's a 5K marathon, Ironman, or whatever it is, Spartan race, something to that effect. Y'all can kind of use how I trained and what I did and kind of adjust that to your own schedule. So that's what we're going to get into today. But, but first, before we get into the podcast, we're going to do the fitness news of the week. And today's study is about exercising or sports, endurance sports, and how safe or dangerous they can be. So most forms of exercise are overwhelmingly safe, but don't ignore those dangers. The reason I want to do talk about this study is because when you're starting your first fitness, like when you're just starting out on your fitness journey, if you're not very careful about what you're doing, you can injure yourself pretty easily. So it's very, very important that you focus on the right technique uh, and learning those from the get go before you're doing a lot of weight. So later on in your journey, when you start adding weight on, you have the right technique and it's going to keep you from getting injured. So that way you can stay in the gym and you can keep working towards those goals because that's the whole idea. You don't want to make some progress, then get injured, lose all that progress, and then have to make it up because then you're just kind of staying in the same place. You're going to be stuck. So this study is mainly about actual sports, but it, it kind of goes hand in hand with working out and endurance training as well. So it says the risk of serious injury from most sports and exercise are astonishingly small. According to the results of this five-year study, they're pretty small with the vast majority of people that participate in the amount of sports and working out just on a daily basis. So overall, it's not that many. It's pretty safe for the most part, but injuries do happen and they're very preventable. So if you just start preventing them from the get go, then you won't have to worry about them as much later on down the road. So it says, let's see, researchers found that between 2012 and 2017, total of 11,702 trauma injuries resulted from sports and exercise. Yeah, that number seems kind of high, but it's really not when you think about the amount of people that participate in sports and exercise on a daily basis. It's pretty, pretty low number for the most part. So while no physical activity is entirely without risk, the chance of a serious injury is exceedingly low when you compare those risks to the amount of health and wellness like benefits or advantages that can be gained from participating in that activity. So like the risks versus rewards for exercising is it's not even close. Like the risk, the, the rewards, the benefits outweigh the risks by a ton. Like it's not even close. I don't see why you wouldn't. And if you take the right precautions to learn the right techniques and to prevent these injuries, then there's really no reason why you shouldn't take advantage of it. So that's basically what the study says. I'm not going to go too much into the weeds of it. But yeah, it's pretty interesting. Basically it says, for the amount of people that participate in sports and exercise on a regular basis, the injuries are very, very low for the most part. So if you're scared of get, getting in the gym because you think you're going to hurt yourself, this is probably not something you need to be too concerned about. Or if you're concerned about it, don't 
load the bar up with a bunch of weight or don't do things that you think you may hurt yourself doing or you don't know how to do. Get somebody to show you the right technique. Look up a YouTube video. Practice it with no weights. Do body weights or put no weights on the bar or whatever it is you're trying to do. Start light. If you're trying to run, don't start just running 10 miles because you're probably not you're going to hurt yourself. Start with the a little run walk action, then start with one mile running and just consistently add to it over time. And this can prevent you from getting injury and hitting that plateau and having to start back over from all the progress that you just you just gained. Learn it right the first time and you won't have to deal with the consequences later. So that's going to lead us into the podcast topic today, which is my Ironman experience and this is Ironman in Florida 2023. It happened November 4th, this past Saturday. And all in all, it was a great day. It's a great experience. Couldn't ask for better weather. It was beautiful. It wasn't too, in the morning, it was a little chilly. And then it warmed up. And then back towards the night, it, it got a little chilly again. But I was never like freezing when it was dark. And I never got too, too hot during the day. So it was, it was just perfect. So yeah, we'll just start from a couple of days before the Ironman leading up to the day and then even after the day of the Ironman yesterday. The Ironman was Saturday. On Wednesday, we went ahead and packed and got ready to go, did any last minute preparations I needed to do. And then we left Thursday morning for the race. It was in Panama City Beach, Florida, if you know where that's at. We had to check in two days before the race. So on Thursday, we checked in, uh, we attended the race briefing, so every athlete is supposed to attend the briefing just to get any last updates on the race or the course or anything like that that you need to know of. You kind of you need to attend the race briefing. Uh, there at the the race expo, they have a store where you can buy all your merch, merch and stuff. So of course, had to get a few little merch. You can see if you're watching the video, got the hat on. A little shirt, had to had to rock my swag for the podcast, you know. So I got some Iron Man stuff. I was kind of feeling in a mix of excitement and a little nervousness this time. I was, I don't know, it hadn't really hit me yet on Thursday, so I was still feeling pretty good. wasn't too anxious or anything like that. Um, I went ahead and got my little workout in this that morning before we left. So when I got to Panama City, didn't have to worry about getting any workouts in that day i could just kind of check in look around the venue you know get a feel for things see where i'm gonna be doing like the transitions and things like that it was pretty pretty smooth thursday and then friday we had a check in all i had to check in my bike had to check in all my gear bags my transition bags and things like that that was on friday it's kind of soaking in the atmosphere and the energy of the race event like venue there's people there's tons of people there there were to be exact there were 2470 participants in the race so that's a lot when you have that many racers plus all their family and friends that are there watching them there's a lot of people in the area and there's a lot of good good vibes the good camaraderie going so it's a, it's a fun place to be it was pretty interesting you definitely get the full experience when you do the iron man race on this day i'm especially focusing on carb loading so trying to eat some more carbs getting ready for the next day fueling up getting some extra calories in my body because i'm going to be burning a ton the next day during the race hydrating 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 drinking plenty of water electrolytes liquid ivs everything i can get I'm trying to fuel my body as much as possible and then after we got the bike and stuff checked in, we literally just went back to the, the house that we were staying at and I relaxed for the rest of the day. Sat on the couch and I watched a bunch of Iron Man videos on YouTube to get some motivation to kind of pump me up and get ready for the big race day. Just thought about my race day strategy, what I was going to do, how I was going to fuel and use the nutrition, like the aid stations and things like that. And I just kind of played out the whole race in my head. So I kind of had a better idea of what to expect. And then of course, Friday night, I got in the bed early, trying to get some good sleep, but you know, I was, I was 
a little nervous, so I didn't really get much sleep. It took me forever to finally go to sleep, and when I did, I kept waking up like every hour on the hour I would get up. I even woke up before my alarm went off at 4 a.m. I was up by like 3.30, 3.45, something like that. Um, so I got up, didn't sleep well, but that's kind of expected when you have something big happen in the next day. It's pretty normal not to, to sleep very well. I wasn't too worried about it. I knew I would still do. I was. I felt good going into the race. So that morning, race day morning, woke up. I said a little bit before my alarm. It was before four a.m. Got up, ate a good, well balanced breakfast. Ate some oatmeal, banana. Had a little coffee to wake me up. Went over my game plan, the mental preparation. Did my morning routine like I always do. I always preach the morning routine and get your mind right, get you going for the day. Uh, did that. Then we arrived at the train. We left the house about five. Arrived at the transition area, had to go set up the rest of my equipment, my bike, make sure my bags were all set up, had to pump up the tires on my bike, you know, getting ready. Um, and then we put on the wetsuit, went down to the beach for the swim start, had to drop my personal needs bags and things like that off. And they would go drop them off on the different locations on the course where they go. And then... That leads us to the swim start. The swim course, if you don't know how an Ironman works, the swim is 2.4 miles long. And this swim was straight off the beach. So we would swim directly out into the water. You take a right, you swim over for a little ways, and then you tur turn right again, and you come back in, and you do two loops. So each loop was 1.2 miles. It's a total of 2.4. And that's the swim course. There was jellyfish everywhere. So luckily I did not get stung. I had a wetsuit on. So pretty much my whole body, so my hands and feet and my head were covered up. Luckily I didn't get didn't get stung. In order for you to wear a wetsuit in Iron Man, the water has to be below or equal to 76 one per uh, degree. So the the water ended up being 74 degrees that morning so we could wear a wetsuit and that's Fahrenheit and then when you do when you get out the first loop and you go into the second loop they call that an Aussie exit I don't really know why it's called that but you get out the water and then you run back to the beginning where you started at the first time and you jump back in the water and then you do it again so if you've never done a, a triathlon before when you're trying to swim with hundreds of other people in the in the water with you it's it's kind of it's kind of chaos out there. Everybody's swimming over each other, hitting each other, kicking each other. It's kind of chaos, and especially if people aren't swimming straight, they're swimming crooked, or the current's taking them out. It, it can get pretty interesting out there. <laughs> it's like a free for for all almost. Yeah, the the swim was the number one thing I was worried about. I was when I first started training, I was not very confident in my swim, so I um, picked up my training. I did more swim training than I did anything else because I knew I was lacking and I needed to get better. So I practiced and practiced and practiced, and I ended up doing way better on the swim than I thought I was going to do. Once I got in, like the wetsuit helps you a lot when it comes to swimming because it makes you more buoyant. Like it makes you almost float. And when you keep your body on top of the water, this is better for like not aerodynamics, but it's a uh, hydrodynamics. It helps you glide through the water better. It makes it a lot easier to fin to swim when you're floating on top of the water rather than your feet dragging below the water. Once you find that right body position, it makes swimming 10 times easier. But yeah, the first lap, my, my goggles kind of filled up with water a little bit and I tried to adjust them and I finally got them about three quarters of the way through. I finally got them to where they wasn't leaking. And then when by the time I got on the second lap, I readjusted them and they were perfect. They didn't leak at all on the second lap. So that was pretty good. I never had to deal with them fogging up and all. Didn't have to worry about that either, which was good. The swim, since it was the first discipline of the race, I really had to practice pacing myself. Like I didn't, I, I went pretty, or I thought I was going pretty slow. I actually did a lot faster than I thought, but I made sure not to push too hard on the swim because I knew I still had a bike and run after that, which was going to be pretty tough. So I held a pretty solid pace throughout the whole swim. Didn't go too slow, didn't go too fast, 
And I ended up doing the swim in an hour and nine minutes, which my goal was an hour and a half. And I did an hour and nine. So about 21 minutes faster, which is really good. I was really proud of my swim. So that leads us to transition one. So we had to run from the beach all the way to the transition area, which is pretty far. And you're running barefooted across the concrete, which doesn't feel good on your feet. My feet were hurting by the time I got to the transition area. It's actually pretty cool. They have a, what they call strippers and it's volunteers that will rip your wetsuit off for you. Cause if you ever put a wetsuit on, you know, they're kind of hard to get off. So they'll help you take it off. So you don't waste a bunch of time trying to get out of it. Um, so yeah, got into transition one, uh, quickly changed, try to dry off as best I could, but didn't really dry off. I was soaking wet. Even when I put my socks on, they were still soaking wet and I think my transition one time was about 10 minutes. So it took a moment to catch my breath, refocus, uh, get ready for the long drawn out bike that we was about to do. So that leads us to the bike course. The bike course is 112 miles long. Yeah, I know that's a, that's a really long ways. They have aid stations set up every 20 miles or so. Aid stations are where they have like water, Gatorade, food, everything you need to fuel your body and keep going. And then the first probably half of the race, we were dealing with some winds, some headwinds blowing against you. So it made it pretty tough the first half, but I made sure to really pace myself during this first half of the race. I uh, actually went pretty slow on purpose. And it actually, I think it helped me a lot because I saved a lot of energy. I didn't uh, go too hard too early. And then that way, I still had a left, lot left in the tank towards the end of the race. So I took it pretty easy the first half. And then once I hit mile 73, we turned around and we come back the opposite way. So the wind was blowing with us at that point, which helped a lot. This is where I picked it up. I, I really started going pretty hard on the bike from mile 70 to pretty much the end of the bike. So I went from averaging like 17 miles per hour on the first half to averaging 20 to 21 miles per hour after mile 73 when I picked it up, which it was a pretty good strategy for me. I, I saved my energy the first half and I, and I picked it up a lot on the second half, which is, I did pretty good. I finished the bike in six hours and nine minutes, which was way above my goal. My goal was to do it in seven hours. So. I was very happy with the with the bike portion of the race. Fortunately, I did not have to deal with any unexpected mechanical issues like my tire popping or the chain breaking or gears not working, anything like that. Those are very common things that happen in Ironmans. And luckily I did not have to deal with any of those. I got I made it all the way through with no flats, which was great. Those last 12 miles from mile 100 to mile 112 was miserable. Those were the longest 12 miles I've ever biked in my life. They were rough. Like I kept thinking the finish line was like one mile away, but for some reason that one mile kept getting longer and longer and longer. I don't know what it was. I guess I was just ready to get off the bike at that point, but I could have sworn I was almost the finish line and it just kept going. I don't know. I don't know what happened. I guess I misjudged how far I was going. As far as like my nutrition tr strategy on the bike was since there was an aid station every 20 miles or so, I was eating something and drinking something at every aid station. I got a water and a Gatorade at every aid station. And then I would eat, uh, they have like these energy gel things you can eat. I'd either eat that or, a, and I had a banana a couple times. So yeah, I was always eating some, made sure to eat at least one or two things at every aid station. This way I stayed fueled gave my body what it needs to keep going. And then as I was getting off my bike, I almost had a uh-oh. When I picked my leg up over my seat to get off, it tried to like cramp up on me when I bit my leg, but I quickly straightened my leg back out and kept it from cramping. So that was good because if I had a cramp that early, I would have been in the bind on the run. So going into transition two, this we're going from the bike to the run at this point. It was a lot quicker. This transition was only like seven minutes. All I had to do really is swap out my, my shoes for the run, put on my race, my race belt, 
and that's about it. Get something to eat real quick. I had to reapply my sunscreen. That's critical. Got to have the sunscreen on. You know, all the pale people out here, we be struggling when it comes to the sun. But going into the run, I knew the run would probably be the hardest just because it was last. And running is probably the hardest on your body. So the run course is 26.2 miles, which is a marathon. Uh, and this course was you ran out 6.5 miles, you ran back in 6.5 miles, and you did that twice. And then they added like a little bit extra at the end where the finish line was at. That made up for the point two. So you do two loops of 6.5 miles and back. The run, this is the like probably the funnest part of the race because since it is a short little loop, there's so many fans and stuff that sit on the side and just root you on. Like there's so many family and friend and friends there that they cheer for everybody. The camaraderie, camaraderie out there is great. Everybody's supporting you, hyping you up, telling you to go. Everybody makes signs, funny signs and things like that that you can read to kind of give you some motivation or make you laugh or anything like that to keep make it not so serious and you forget about how bad you're struggling at that moment because at some point <laughs> sometimes you can be hurting you can be miserable you can be ready to go home so it kind of breaks things up a little bit and makes it a little more enjoyable so the run for the first half the first the half marathon i really focus on pacing myself so i try to run them pretty pretty decent pace not too fast but not too slow try to just hold it steady and I stopped at every aid station on the bike. I mean, on the run, they have aid station every mile to one and a half miles. So my strategy was to just walk through the aid stations. So I would run all the way up to the front of the aid station, walk through it, get water, Gatorade, energy gel, banana, whatever it is I was getting. And then as soon as I got to the end, I would keep on running. The key to keeping my body cool, my heart rate low was... I dumped water and ice on me pretty much the whole time. Every time I went through an aid station, I was grabbing water and or ice and dumping on me, try to keep my body cool, keep my heart rate down as best I could. And this worked out. It helped a lot by not getting overheated. I never, besides walking through the aid stations, I never stopped to walk at all. So I pretty much ran the whole thing. I did have to stop at the turnaround point to put a Band-Aid on the back of my heel because my shoes were rubbing blisters on my heels and it was just getting worse and worse. So I threw a band aid on there real quick and it actually helped until the next lap. And then I had to put another band aid on it the next lap. But other than that, that's the only time I stopped. I had to stop at the halfway point to pick up my personal needs bag. So at the 13.1 mile mark, I, I got some ibuprofen and some, a little electrolyte packs that I used to get some more electrolytes in my body. But I literally stopped for maybe 30 seconds and I was running again. But yeah, I thought the the run would be the hardest. And in my opinion, I don't know. I don't really know which one I would say was the hardest. Probably the bike, just because it was so long. Like the bike took forever. I was on the bike for six hours and nine minutes. That's a long time. And you're out there basically by yourself. The only other people out there are the people on the bike. You're, run, you're riding through woods, you're riding down the streets with cars past you, and it can get kind of lonely and boring after a while. There's just an area riding down the street. The run was a lot better because there's people all up and down the road. There are people standing on both sides of the road cheering you on, hyping you up and stuff. So it made the run a lot better. So I would have to say the bike was probably the hardest. So that brings us to the finish line. The finish line is pretty unique. If you never watched the Iron Man, they had this big, like, long red carpet, big old arch thing that has the time limits on it and stuff. It's pretty neat, and everybody lines up down the sides of it, and they root you on and cheer you on as you come to the finish line. So it's pretty neat. As soon as I got to the red carpet, like right where it starts, it's pretty long. I got to the end, they have, like, this little first time as timer's bell that you can ring. It was your first Iron Man. So right before I got to the bell, my left leg cramped up, like locked up on me. <laughs> I was like, of course it would do this now. As soon as I get to the, right before the finish line, my leg going to cramp up. And luckily, 
it wasn't too bad. Like I cramped up, I stretched it out real quick and walked, I had to walk for a second. And then I rang the bell as I was walking. And then by that time, it had kind of gone away. So I, I jogged it in for the last little bit, crossed the finish line. And it was awesome. It was amazing. The overwhelming sense of accomplishment is it's something you kind of have to experience for yourself. Like it's one of those things you just got to do it. You can't really put it in words. It was because you know that all that hard work you put in, all the training, the early mornings, the long rides, the the long runs, all that training paid off. Like you didn't do it for nothing. It was all worth it. And you finally got to see the reward and the benefit from from all that training payoff. So it's a pretty unique experience. It's pretty fun. My first one ever. I really enjoyed it. I think I I did a lot better than I expected. My goal was 14 hours. My total time ended up being 12 hours and 13 minutes. So in my opinion, I kind of crushed it. I did good, a lot better than I expected. I'm very happy with my results and the way it turned out. I'm happy with the whole experience, honestly. It was a great day, a great weekend. And like Ironman puts on a huge experience, like a whole race day from Thursday all the way up to Sunday after the race. They put on things for you to do throughout the like the race expo. So it's pretty unique. If you would ever do one, I'd highly encourage you to sign up and do one. Uh, you won't regret it, I promise. It is a little expensive, but the money they charge for, it's all accounted for. Like you're not paying for nothing. You get a lot of stuff with included in what you pay for. So after the race on Sunday, they have a closing ceremony type deal where they give away all their world champion slots and stuff like that. That's the next day, Sunday. Saying I was sore on Sunday was an understatement. I was sore. Like my legs are still sore right now. Like my legs, probably the sorest they've ever been in their life. <laughs> but oh well, that's just part of it. Receiving the finisher's medal, that was pretty cool. Getting to see your family right at the end, the finish line. It's pretty enjoyable because a lot of my family was there supporting me throughout the whole entire race, the swim, the bike, and the run, which helped a lot. Having somebody there in your corner rooting you on, cheering you on, it helps a lot. Because there's some parts of that race where you just want to quit. You just want to give up. You don't know why you signed up to do this in the first place to basically torture yourself. So having people there to support you is key. Thank you to my family for showing up. It was it was awesome having me out there, especially the experience that my first ever Ironman with me. I really enjoyed it. So yeah, reflecting on some of the highs and the lows. Honestly, I didn't really have any lows besides the fact that you're pushing your body to its limits, which it can get tough. I had a positive mindset about it the whole time. I'm one of those people when, I, if I set my mind to it, I ain't stopping. Like I'm gonna keep going till I finish. So I never, I never got in my head to where I was like, I'm going to quit. Like I want to, I want to give up. This absolutely sucks. I never got to that point. I, I'm sure if I do another one or something, I probably will. But since it was my first one, I was pumped. Like I was excited, had that adrenaline glowing. Like I was, I was all for it. So I, it never crossed my mind that I wanted to quit. I, I knew I was finishing that race regardless. Like I, before the race, I said, it's only two ways I'm coming off that course. And it's across the finish line or it's in an ambulance. That's the only way I'm leaving that course. So wasn't too many lows. I did mention like the bike was kind of rough, the wind blowing in you. I had people passing me up on the bike the whole time, which I'm very competitive. So when people pass me, it kind of made me mad, but I just had to stick to my plan and it all worked out because later on, I ended up passing a lot of those people on the back half of the race because they went too hard at the start and I saved my energy. So I passed them up later on. So sticking to the race plan was, was key, but the bike did kind of, after that hundred mile mark, the bike was rough. I'm not even gonna lie. It was, it was pretty tough. The run, I never run a marathon in my life. So I was very impressed with myself. I shocked myself. Cause I honestly, I didn't think I could run a marathon. Honestly, I never did it. The most I did in training was like 19 miles. So I ran about seven miles more than I'd ever ran before. I impressed myself. I'm not gonna lie. Honestly, the worst part about the whole race is probably the day after and today being so sore. It's not fun. I can barely get in and out of the car on the way home from 
Panama City yesterday. <laughs> it was rough just trying to pick up my legs to get in the car. And then walking up and down the stairs, yeah, that's not happening. You got to hold on to the guardrail to kind of pull yourself up or lower yourself down. And Tyler asked, what was the hardest part of the Ironman? Honestly, signing up for it and getting to the start line. That was the hardest part. But once I had started and once I signed up for it and I committed to it, I knew that I was good. It just it took me a while to convince myself to actually sign up because I didn't think I could do it. But then once I started training and put in the time and the effort, by the time I got to the start line, I knew I could do it at that point. Like there wasn't no doubt in my mind that I wasn't finishing that race. So the hardest part is just making the decision that you're going to do it. And then once you decide you're going to do it, you're going to do whatever it takes to to get it done, period. I'm not going to commit to something that I don't think I can do. Or if I do commit some, I'm going to figure out how to do it one way or the other. Blake asked, was it worth all the long, hard training days? 100%. It was 100% worth it. Totally. Like Once you cross that finish line, even honestly, even if you don't cross the finish line, it's definitely worth it. You learn so much throughout the journey of training for it, getting up early. You get you learn discipline. You learn your diet. You learn more about. I literally had never swam bike or ran before, so I learned about three different sports. I mean, I learned a lot throughout the process, so I wouldn't trade it for anything. Even if I didn't finish the race, I wouldn't. I wouldn't change the whole training process. Will I train any differently for the next one? Uh, yeah, I definitely will. If you know my background, you know my background is in weightlifting. I prefer lifting weights. That's kind of what I've always done. So when I started, when I started training for the Ironman, I completely stopped lifting weights. I strictly did endurance training two a days from Monday to Friday, and then Saturday and Sunday were my really long bike days and my and my really long run days. So I was working out seven days a week doing two days five days a week and it was brutal like it was a long training period but the only reason i did that way is because i only gave myself about five months to train for it. so i had to pack in a lot of training in a little bit of time so i kind of had to do that much training to get to where i needed to be to finish the race so would i do that again no next time i would give myself more time to train for it that way i didn't need to Really do two days, and I don't need to train seven days a week. I would definitely tone it back to five or six days a week, give my body some days to rest throughout the week to recover better. Um, and I wouldn't swim as much. This past one, I was swimming five days a week, which is not necessary. The only reason I did that is because I sucked at swimming, and I needed to get better. So I would only swim about two or three days a week the next time I trained. Um so, yeah, I would tone my workouts back a lot and give myself a lot longer to train for it. So, yeah, that was my race day experience. The reason I tell you why I want to talk about my Ironman experience is because me starting my Ironman experience was something new, something fresh that I'd never done. So this kind of correlates to people starting in their fitness journey. No, it don't have to be as extreme as doing an Ironman. It could be as simple as going to the gym three days a week, but you have to make that decision that you're going to do it, that you're going to get in shape. You're going to start your fitness journey. You have to sign up for the race. Like I mentioned earlier, that was the hardest part was signing up for the race. Well, the hardest part for you is deciding that you're going to do, you're going to start your fitness journey. You're going to sign up for a, a gym membership or whatever that may look like. So it kind of, I had to learn something new. When you're starting your finish journey, you're going to have to learn something new. you got to change up your schedule. I completely changed up my workout routine. I went from working out in the gym six days a week to endurance training seven days a week and not working out in the gym at all. So it's completely different. You had to, depending on what your goals are, you're going to have to change. If you want to lose 10 pounds, if you want to lose 100 pounds, your schedule is going to have to change. Your goals are going to have to change. Your diet is going to have to change. You got to embrace this change. Just like, don't be afraid to change. It's okay to change, especially if it's for the better. So you got to make that decision that you're going to change and be okay with it. If you're used to going home 
right after work every day to do whatever. You got to get used to going to the gym after work. Pack your bag, take it with you before, take you with you to work. That way you can go straight to the gym on the way home and knock it out while, you, while you're already out. Don't go home first. That's going to give you an excuse of why I'm not, like, not to go back to the gym. So that's why I tell y'all about my journey is that it's a long process. It's literally a journey. It's not something that you're just going to do in one month and it'll be over. It's something that takes time, it takes dedication, it takes discipline. And honestly, once you like do all these things, you won't regret it. I promise. I, 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 would, I do not regret one bit any of the training sessions that I did. I do not regret waking up at 3.30 a.m. on a Saturday to go ride my bike for six hours. Because when I crossed that finish line this past Saturday, it made all of it worth it. Like it made all the training worth it. It's kind of hard to explain unless you do. I promise you, you change up your routine, you go to the gym, and you lose those 50 pounds so you can fit in those jeans that you used to wear 10 years ago. If you do that, I promise you, you will not regret going to the gym and working your butt off each and every day. You won't regret it. You just, there's no way. The the benefit and the reward that you get from setting out to achieve a goal, putting in the work and actually achieving that goal, there's no better feeling than that. Like there's no regret there. And if you don't do it, you probably will regret it. So what you waiting on, get after it. Y'all can do it. If I can do a Ironman that I have something I've never done before, never trained for, never ran, never swam, never biked. If I can do it, then you can get in the gym and start achieving your goals, whether it's running a 5K, whether, it, whether it's losing 10 pounds, bench pressing 225 pounds, whatever it is, it's going to look different for everybody. Nobody's goals and nobody's goals are the same. So figure out what that is for you. Start making the simple changes. Don't, don't try to make too big of changes. Make small changes one at a time as you get better at that one master as you master that one add another one and add another one and keep habit stacking over time and this is how you will achieve what it is whatever it is that you're setting out to achieve so that's why i share my iron man journey with y'all because me learning this new sport basically it correlates to you getting started on your fitness journey on you learning more about fitness, learning more about diet, learning more about health benefits, things like that. So it's all kind of the same, just a different aspects, different uh, sports, different goals. It all correlates. But yeah. That's pretty much it about my Ironman experience. That's going to lead us to the fitness quote, motivational quote of the week. And it only makes sense to do it about endurance training. So the quote this week is, endurance is not just the ability to bear a hard thing, but to turn it into glory. I'll read it again. Endurance is not just the ability to bear a hard thing, but to turn it into glory. So this quote means building up your endurance is not about doing the things that is hard. It's not, I'm trying to think of how to put this, how to word this the best. It's not just doing the hard thing just because it's hard. It's doing the hard thing because you know there's glory at the end of the road. Like there's there's a there's an ultimate goal at the end of the road. And to, in, to get to that goal, you have to build up the endurance to get through those obstacles to eventually get to the end of the road, if that makes sense. It's about putting in like the hard training days that nobody wants to do. That's not fun. So that when the final end day comes, it's all worth it. Like you get the glory for all those past hard training sessions that you put in. When you lose that 10 pounds, that's the glory of all those hours that you spend in the gym leading up to that time. All the, the healthy food that healthy food decisions that you made instead of eating junk food like all that hard bearing all those hard things led to the glory of whatever your goal was 
that's how I know how I uh, interpret that quote. So yeah, that's all I got for the podcast today. Thank y'all for tuning in. I appreciate it. Follow me on all my socials, Murphy Mac Fit on social media. The Fitness Beginner Podcast on YouTube, on Apple Podcasts, Spotify. Check it out. Leave a review. Subscribe. Let me know what you like about the podcast. If you have a topic you want me to cover, let me know. And hey, we may just put it on the podcast. Until next week, y'all tune in again next Monday. Y'all have a great rest of your week. Get after it. Go achieve your goals. Go do big things. Sign up for a race. Sign up for a gym membership. Do something. Put yourself out of your comfort zone to challenge yourself. You won't regret it, I promise. Peace, love, protein. We out. Thanks for tuning in to the Fitness Beginner Podcast. We hope you found today's episode helpful and inspiring. Remember to always start small. Set realistic goals. And most importantly, have fun. Don't forget to tune in next week for more tips and advice on how to kickstart your fitness journey. Until then, stay active and stay healthy.